I'm Adam Levy here for Acoustic Guitar. Uh, this is a tune of mine. It's called Sidewalk Chalk, and it comes from a recent record I made called Spry. I want to show you how to play Sidewalk Chalk, uh, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about how I wrote the tune and the guitar and other stuff that I used on the recording. Sidewalk Chalk is in 3-4 time, and it's in the key of B major, although there's an intro up front in the key of G. So uh, let me show you that first. It centers on two chords. The first chord is this, and the second chord is this. And I think of that as some kind of C chord some kind of G chord. They both have a 9 or a 2 in them. You could say this is a C sus 2 because uh, this would be a more uh, familiar C chord. But instead of playing the 3rd, play the 2. So C sus 2 then G, you could also say G sus2 because instead of the third, we have the, the second or the nine. And sometimes I'll let the B string be part of either of those chords. That would get you to this. of those chords changes a little bit even though the fingering is exactly the same. Now I'm thinking of this as G over C because we've got the notes of the G, a G triad but with C in the bass. So G over C and G add to. The difference between sus2 and add to is in a sus2, we wouldn't have the third, we would have the two instead of the three. In an add2, we can have the two and th the three. So on a G chord, there's your two, there's your three. And here it is one more time without the B string. play it either way and in a performance I might do it one way sometimes one way another time. So that's the intro which could be four bars or could be longer if you want to create a little bit of atmosphere before you start the tune. Once we start the tune we go to this B major 7 chord uh, like this. So I'm playing B F sharp A sharp. Then open B So that's really the first four bars of the tune. B major 7, E, B major 7, E. And then I walk up a B major scale starting on the D sharp. So one, two, three. get to C sharp, which is still in the B, in the B major scale, uh, now I play a chord that's not in the B major scale. I use the C sharp as part of D major 7. And then this is a G9, but with no third, like the, that would be the third down here, but we're not going to play that. So D major 7. down half step to G flat or F sharp, however you want to call that, 
and just the root and the two. Or nine. Two and nine is, I use those loosely interchangeably. Uh, so that would be uh, a G flat with just, just, the, <laughs> just the root and the two. And this chord, I make a bar across four strings. Uh, at the first fret, and then I use uh, fingers two and three on strings three and two to make this chord. So that's an E flat. Uh, it's got the nine on top. You see almost all the chords in this tune, the nine is uh, featured in the melody. So nine, there's your flat seven, that makes it dominant. And then there's your flat five. So I think of this as E flat nine, flat five. Then back to a D major seven chord again, but now instead of just three notes, like we did earlier, now we're gonna go all the way four notes so we get to the top string. And then this chord is uh, C sharp augmented or maybe uh, D flat augmented, just however you want to think of it. Getting uh, third and second string here. Now here you can see maybe more why I would call this G over C. In the intro, maybe that's not clear why that's G over C, but here there's a G triad with C as the bass note. And um, that C over, uh, G over C here is the one time, I play most of this with a, a flat pick and get everything I can with just uh, single strikes of the flat pick. But the one place that I use hybrid is just because there's such a spread here between the second string and the fifth string and I want them to sound at the same time. So. talking and uh, I'll skip the intro I'll just go straight from the top of the tune I'll count to three I'll play it a little slower than I normally would and uh, if you want to follow along with the music you can and maybe try playing this or parts of it one bar one two three So that's the melody and the chords of Sidewalk Chalk. And if you just wanted to play that, that would be plenty of music. But if you're like me, you might want to improvise on it and uh, expand it so that you can play it for a few minutes and ex explore and, and then come back to the tune. So I'm gonna show you how I think about this tune. It's a 16 bar tune and we'll look at it four bars at a time mostly through the lens of uh, which, uh, which scales you might want to play for each chord or each section of chords. Of course, scales aren't the only answer to how to improvise, but it's a great place to start, so that's, that's what we're going to do. The first four bars alternate between B major 7 and E. one measure of each. So that's the one chord and the four chord in the key of B major. So really you could play uh, from the B major scale over both of those chords. Uh, here's a B major scale here in open position, starting on B.
go all the way up to G sharp. Why not? It's there, it's within reach, and we'll come back down. So uh, that's the scale, and you could continue with that scale when we get to the next section, at least for the first two bars. So first four bars is B major 7 E, B major 7 E. Next four bar phrase is two bars of just B major. It doesn't need to have the 7 on it, just B major. And then uh, a change to D major 7 and G7 or G9. That's the nine. So uh, really, first six bars, we can think B major. Now, here I would think D major. And then when we go to this chord, I still would think D major, but the F sharp goes to F natural. And that, if you play a D major scale, but change F sharp to F natural, you get this. You might wonder, why did we change the F sharp to F natural? Well, because this G7 chord doesn't have F sharp, it has F natural. But I want to keep as much of the D major scale intact as we can so that we're not making big radical changes every time there's a new chord. So we're just changing one note. If you know your music theory and you know some scales, you might know that D major with F natural in it is D melodic minor. So uh, we're playing D melodic minor over this G7 chord. So D major. D melodic minor. Then we go down this half step and I think uh, no, don't play the open D as I just did. Uh, go down a half step, and now I think of this as uh, G flat major. So we can just play that scale. And then this chord, E flat 9, flat 5, again, I think of that as a melodic minor sound because if you look at this even though I'm calling it E flat 7 9 or E flat 9 with a flat 5 if you just look at what this looks like compared to where we just were on the G flat we've got the 6 E flat is the 6 of G flat A is the minor third right this is the major third here's the minor third here's the 5 Here's the major seven. So we've got six, minor third, five, major seven, if we're still thinking about G flat. And that comes right out of melodic minor. So over those, this is be the third four bar section of the tune where it goes from here to here to here to here. So I'm thinking G flat major, G flat melodic minor and then for this D major 7 chord I probably would play either D major or D Lydian uh, why D Lydian because that sharp 4 that G sharp is going to be hanging in the air from the two scales that we just played previously. So that note is common to all of those. So if modes are new to you or if melodic minor is new to you, just rewind this and watch it again or maybe uh, you know put it away for a couple of days and come back to it and see if your brain can digest this. It, it might be a lot of new information, it might not, but uh, all of this is kind of a heady way of explaining what I think is some pretty natural uh, tendencies in music where you just change one note uh, to, to get a very different color in the chord. So that's really like G flat major, G flat minor, D, and then when we get all the way down 
to this augmented chord, I probably would just think of either the arpeggio from, uh, from this, or uh, I might think again of G flat minor. harmonic minor that's what that sounds like to me so all of that centering around G flat kind of stuff but just different qualities um, and now we get out of all of this uh, to something a lot easier to understand now we're just going from C to G so we can just play the G scale starts on C and then goes to G, I think of that as 4-1 in G. So there's four sections, starts going 1-4 in B, ends up going 4-1 in G. And that last bit, the last four bars of the tune, is the same material that uh, I used uh, for the intro. So should be familiar because we were working on it earlier. So in improvising, that's the scale stuff. Also make sure that you learn the melody of the tune uh, so that it's real clear and strong in your mind. Uh, sometimes when I'm improvising, I think about scales. Uh, other times I just think about the melody of the tune and try to play around it and decorate it maybe Instead of going directly to one of the notes of the melody, I might approach it from just above or just below. So what I mean is like on this first thing at the beginning, I might go, so instead of just starting on this note, I might go, connecting the dots using the notes of the scale but trying to land on the important notes of the melody but maybe walking up to them or walking down to them uh, just by one or two notes that starts to uh, put a little bit more melodic shape that you can make your own. Sidewalk chalk is in the key of B major and you might wonder why? Why did I write this tune in B major, which is maybe not the most natural laying key on the guitar? But that's precisely why I did that. Uh, when I wrote this tune, I, I knew I was writing a bunch of music for a new record. I wanted to have maybe 10 or 12 pieces. And the first uh, handful that I wrote were in C and uh, G and D. And they were all in 4-4 four, four time. And I thought, okay, I don't want to have a whole record that's in 4-4 four, four in guitaristic keys. I want to have a little bit more variety. So uh, I wrote this tune in B major. There's another tune on the record that's called King Pleasure. That's in the key of D flat. Uh, again, just to have some variety. Uh, when you're putting the tunes in order, you know, once they're all recorded and you're getting the, what's called the sequence when you put the songs in order for a record, uh, it's really nice to have a, a variety of keys, a variety of tempos, uh, a variety of meters, so everything's not in 4-4. Four, four. Uh, and also different kinds of forms. Sidewalk chalk is just 20 bars long. You can easily write it on half a page of music paper. Uh, some of the other tunes are longer forms, uh, some have open sections, so that's what I was thinking. Uh, I wanted to have a tune that was uh, had these qualities to it that were different than the qualities of some of the other pieces on the record. Finally, I want to talk about some gear. Uh, this guitar, the guitar I'm playing here, is the guitar that I used on the recording of Sidewalk Chalk. Uh, it is a Collings guitar from 2022. The model is DS2HASB. It is a 12 fret 
Dreadnought guitar, slotted headstock, rosewood back and sides, Adirondack spruce top with a sunburst finish, as you can see. Uh, it's got a pickup in it, which is a K and K pure mini pickup. Uh, on the recording, I used the pickup sound as well as a couple of microphones. Uh, I can't remember the exact model, but they were a pair of Telefunken uh, small diaphragm condenser microphones. And uh, the, the pickup was going out into a Rupert Neve DI. So getting a, a really rich, beautiful sound out of this pickup. I use this pickup also for live performance. Uh, pretty much always needs to have some kind of preamp. There, there's no preamp built into the guitar. There's no battery. It's just a passive pickup. So when I'm playing live, I will usually use uh, a preamp called the Red Eye. It's made by a company called Fire Eye. And it's just a real simple, straightforward little preamp, not a lot of controls on it. Uh, it runs on phantom power. And I'm actually running through that now. So the sound that you're hearing on this guitar uh, in, this, in this lesson is a blend of the microphone that I'm speaking on, which is a Shure SM7B. That's just out of frame. So you're hearing some of the guitar through that mic. You're also hearing the pickup going through this uh, red eye preamp, but in the studio it was a pair of Telefunken mics and uh, the Rupert Neve DI. No EQ, I don't think, but a little bit of compression uh, on the DI, just to get it to speak in, in the in the best possible way in a studio environment. Uh, so I, I mention all this stuff because in a studio environment sometimes you have access to uh, expensive gear that you wouldn't necessarily have at home but the stuff that I'm using to record this lesson is the same as what I would use if I was uh, doing an acoustic guitar session at home only difference being uh, to make this video I've got the microphone a little bit out of frame I'm trying to catch my voice and the guitar uh, on a recording session I, I would bring the mic closer into the guitar so there it is, Sidewalk Chalk. I hope that you'll enjoy playing it just as it is uh, and or as a vehicle for some improvisation. Uh, I also hope it might inspire you to write some tunes of your own. Uh, again, for Acoustic Guitar, I'm Adam Levy. <laughs>